Hi all, welcome to my channel 100% Concept Clear. In this video, we are going to find out the initial solution for the transportation problem using the first method, that is Northwest Corner Rule method. So, if anybody want to watch this same video in Tamil, link is available in the description box. Now see, here is the question. Find the initial solution from the problem given below using. So, we have to find the initial solution for this problem using all these three methods. Now, in this video, we are going to use this Northwest Corner Rule method. So, see the matrix. Here we have three plants and the supply of those plants are given here. And we have three warehouses and the demand of those warehouses are given here. So, the manufacturer is going to transport goods from plants to warehouses. So, let's solve this using the algorithm. See the algorithm, first phase initial solution. So, first step to find out the initial solution is objective, minimization or maximization. Minimization means to minimize cost and maximization to maximize profit. So, first we have to find the objective of the sum. That is whether it is to minimize the cost or it is to maximize profit. So, if nothing is specified in the equation, then the sum is minimization type by default. Now check the question. See the question. Find the initial solution for the problem given below using these methods. So we are asked to find out the initial solution using these three methods. We don't have any information about whether it is a minimization problem or it is a maximization problem. So if nothing is specified about the objective of the problem, then the problem must be considered as the minimization type by default. So all these nine elements represent the cost here. Now check what is the next step. You see here in first step we found that it is a minimization problem because no information has been given about the objective. So we just considered the problem as minimization problem by default. So if it is a maximization problem we should convert the maximization problem into a minimization problem. So if it is a maximization problem we should perform one step. So that maximization type we will discuss in my upcoming video. Now see next step balanced or unbalanced balanced. If demand and supply are equal, it is balanced transportation problem and go to next step. So if demand and supply are equal, then it is a transportation problem. We can move to the third step. Or if it is unbalanced, if demand and supply are not equal, add dummy row or column which is insufficient with zero cost and go to next step. If it is unbalanced problem, that is demand and supply are not equal, we should add the dummy row or column and we should give the cost as zero and we can move to third step. Now check whether our problem is balanced or unbalanced. See here for that we should add the demand and supply. Here summation of EI that is supply 20 plus 28 plus 17 is equal to 65 and summation of BJ that is demand. 21 21 and 25 25 19 19 so that is also 65 so therefore supply is equal to 65 is equal to demand therefore it is a balanced transportation problem so in the sum the demand and supply are equal therefore it is a balanced problem so we are going to step 3 so this unbalanced type of transportation problem i will discuss this in my upcoming video now see the third step Identifying initial solution by using any one method. Those are Northwest Corner Rule method and LCM, least cost method and VAM method, Vogel's approximation method. So we can find the initial solution by using any one method. So in this video, we are going to use the Northwest Corner Rule method. Let us first understand what is meant by Northwest Corner Rule method. So see here. We all know the directions. In top we have north and in down we have south and in right side we have east and in left side we have west. So this cross points represents the these two direction. That is northeast and here it is southeast and here it is southwest and here it is northwest. So, so northwest comes here that is the top left direction. So see top and the left side. 
so northwest comes in the top left direction see here choose the left to top most corner that is northwest corner then we should compare demand and supply and make the minimum value as allocation and then we should compare the demand and supply of that corresponding cell and we should find the minimum value from that demand and supply and we should allocate that then repeat the same until all allocations are made so we should repeat this step until all allocations are made so let's do this now see now we are going to allocate the cells using the northwest corner rule method see these are the three plants p1 p2 p3 and here is the demand and these are the three warehouses warehouse 1 2 and 3 and here is the supply and the demand and supply are equal therefore it is 65 now see which is the northwest corner see here comes the northwest corner so we are going to find out the northwest corner from this 9 element from this 9 element so see from 7 6 9 5 7 3 and 4 5 8 which is located in the northwest corner see northwest corner comes here this is the area and northwest corner comes here so likewise this is the area northwest corner comes in this cell so now we are going to allocate in this cell the next step is we should compare the demand and supply so see in the corresponding cells see here we have supply 20 and here we have demand 21 so now we are going to find the minimum value from this demand and supply see here we have 20 and here we have 21 so which is the least value 20 so we are going to allocate this 20 here so we are going to allocate this 20 here so cancel this 20 and allocate 20 here so now we allocated 20 here so minus this 20 from this 21 so 20 minus 21 is 1 and then we have allocated all the 20 here so we don't have any number to allocate here so cancel these two cells also now in this six cells we are going to find which is located in northwest corner 5 is located in the northwest corner so we are going to allocate in 5 so now compare demand and supply see the corresponding demand and supply here we have 28 supply and in demand we have 1 so now we are going to find which is minimum that is 1 or 28 1 is the minimum value so we are going to allocate minimum value 1 here so allocate 1 here and cancel this 1. So if we cancel this 1, this demand becomes 0. So we have nothing to allocate here. So cancel this also. So now we are going to subtract this allocated 1 from the supply. So 28 minus 1 is 27. So now second allocation is completed. Now check which is situated in the northwest corner. 7, 3, 5, 8. Here, 7 is the northwest corner. So now we are going to allocate in 7. Now compare the demand and supply. Here we have 27 as supply. And here we have 25 as demand. So which is the minimum value? 27 or 25? 25 is minimum. So allocate this 25 here. So 25 cancel. And we are going to allocate this here. And if we cancel to this 25, it comes to 0. So if it is 0, we don't have anything, any number to allocate in 5. So we cancel this 5 also. And after, we have to subtract this 25 from this 27. So 27 minus 25 is 2. Now third allocation is also completed. Now check which is located in northwest corner. Here we have 3 and 8. So 3 is located in the northwest corner. So now we are going to allocate in this cell. Now compare the demand and supply which is minimum. Here we have 2 and here we have 19. So 2 is minimum. So allocate this 2 here. So 2 cancel and we allocated the 2 here. 
So when we allocate to here, we should subtract this two from here. So 19 minus 2 is 17. Now fourth allocation is also completed. Now check we have only this cell. So we can directly allocate there. So compare the demand and supply. In demand we have 17 and in supply also we have 17. So cancel those 17 and allocate here. So now we have completed the allocations. Now check what is next step. See the next step, step 4. Degenerate or non-degenerate solution. Non-degenerate solution. If number of allocations is equal to number of initial basic feasible solution that is m plus n minus 1 or equal, it is a non-degenerate solution. Then we can go to next step. Or it is degenerate solution. If number of allocation is not equal to number of initial basic feasible solution that is m plus n minus 1 or not equal then it is a degenerate solution. Now check whether our solution is degenerate or non-degenerate solution. For that the condition is number of allocation should be equal to m plus n minus 1. Now see, see here number of initial feasible solution that is m plus n minus 1. Here m is rho and n is column and minus 1. See m row. We have 1, 2, 3, 3 rows. So 3 and n is column. We have w1, w2, w3. 3 column. So 3 minus 1. So 3 plus 3, 6 minus 1 is 5. And then number of allocations. That is in how many cells we have allocated. See here 1 and here 2 and here 3 and here 4 and here 5. So we have 5 allocated cells. Therefore that is, is 5. Therefore number of initial feasible solution is 5. Also number of allocation is 5. Therefore these both are equal. If number of initial feasible solution and number of allocations are equal then the solution is non-degenerate solution. So in this sum the number of allocations and number of initial feasible solution are equal. Therefore we are going to next step. So if it is unequal, that is degenerate solution. So how to solve this degenerate solution that I will upload in my future video. Now we can move to the next step. See the next step. Step 5. Calculate transportation cost. So this is the last step in the initial solution. See, if it is a cost sum, then cost function. That is the question into allocation. Cij into xij. Then if it is a profit sum, profit function, that is the question Pij into allocation Xij. So the transportation cost is equal to sum of the product of Xij and Cij of all allocated cells. So we have to multiply the cost function and allocations in all the allocated cells and then we have to add those number. Then we will get the transportation cost. So now apply this. See the next step cost. So the formula is cost function into allocation cost function is the equation into allocation is the allocated value so the reason for multiply is see here we are going to transport goods from plant to warehouse so for transporting one product from plant one to warehouse one the cost is seven here we allocated 20 so we are going to transport 20 goods from plant to warehouse so now we are going to find the cost for transporting 20 product therefore 7 into 20 that's why we are multiplying and then next 5 into 1 5 into 1 and then 7 into 25 and 7 into 25 and 3 into 2 3 into 2 and 8 into 17 so 8 into 17 See, 17 into 20 is 140 and 5 into 1 is 5 and 7 into 25 is 175 and 3 into 2 is 6 and 8 into 17 is 136. So when we add all these, the cost will be 462. Therefore, the minimum transportation cost is rupees 462. So now we have found the initial solution for the transportation problem using the first method that is Northwest Corner Rule method. If you have any doubt, leave your doubt in the comment section and if you found this video useful, like it and share with your friends and help them to understand concept easily and for more related topics, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.